السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to a new video for a summary of a new lesson in grade 9 biology Today our video is a summary for activity 5 of chapter 1 titled The Root of Nutrients The main question in this activity is where do nutrients go after the complete digestion of food Before we start answering this question let us discover the organs of the digestive system we have here first the mouth as we go down we have this tube which is the biggest uh, attaches the mouth to, to the stomach this is the stomach here we have uh, next to the stomach the liver and under the liver is the gallbladder that we mentioned before the liver that uh, secretes the bile which helps the lipase and then look here at the tube between the liver and the gallbladder the liver sends the bile to the gallbladder where it's stored and then there is another tube here that uh, sends the bile when needed to the here the small intestine the stomach is attached to the small intestine behind the stomach there is the pancreas which is a gland it's a very important gland for digestion and other body processes it also has another tube or a duct that transports the pancreatic juice to the intestine also to the small intestine and after the small intestine ends we start with the large intestines all the large intestine now if we uh, remember the food that uh, we eat first we start with the starch okay when we eat the starch it moves through the digestive system and finally in the um, uh, in the small intestine it ends digestion okay so we get uh, uh, glucose same thing for proteins okay it moves through the digestive system it starts digestion in the stomach and ends in the small intestine same thing for lipids okay they start digestion in the small intestine and end in the small intestine and finally we have some other nutrients like vitamin like uh, water like minerals okay that we also consume with our food so here we see that um, this uh, food finally they end up at the small intestine and they are transformed into nutrients meaning they are no more uh, complex they are the simplest as they can now let us take a look at the structure of small intestine we see that this small intestine is a long tube and it is folded into many folds and actually the length of a small intestine of an adult can reach eight meters and how does it fit in the abdomen it fits by folding into many folds if we take a section of the small intestine we can see that the wall first is made of several layers of muscles and the inside of the small intestine as you see here is not smooth it has ridges or tiny folds inside the small intestine now if we go deeper and deeper in the small intestine we can see that these ridges that we talked about are filled with finger-like structures that are called villi look how the wall of the small intestine is not smooth it is filled with villi each villus as we see here we can see it under the microscope is vascularized with blood capillary and a lactyl or a lymph vessel we want to see the inside of the small intestine wall it looks a little like this it's not smooth imagine you're entering the small intestine this is how it looks from the inside due to the presence of millions of finger-like structures called villi now in your book you have this document in activity 5 document f that shows the quantity of nutrients in the blood uh, which are glucose and amino acids before a meal and after a meal so we notice if you look at the numbers directly it shows that the amount or quantity of nutrients increases in the blood okay after we eat we notice that the amount of glucose in the blood increases and the amount of amino acids in the blood increases so where is this increase in the quantity of nutrients come from where does it come from obviously it comes from the intestine 
for these nutrients after the complete digestion of the food, these nutrients do not stay in the intestine. They move somehow into the blood, and that's why their quantity in the blood increases. So we can say that the nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream after the complete digestion. Now let us see how does this happen. Look here at this diagram, which shows, which shows one villus. Uh, as we said before, the, uh, the villus is first uh, surrounded by a thin wall of epithelium, a single layer of cells, okay? And this is a very important thing that helps in the absorption. And uh, inside it, there is a blood capillary and a lacteal or a lymph vessel. Now let's look at these um, nutrients. For example, we have the amino acid. When it is in the intestine, the amino acid is absorbed into the villus through the wall. It passes through the wall and it goes to the blood capillary. So the amino acid goes to the blood capillary. Uh, another nutrient, for example, which is the minerals. And notice here that the minerals are not digested because they are already simple. It also passes through the wall of the villus and goes to the blood capillary. Okay, the glucose, the same thing, through the wall and into the blood capillary. The vitamins, the same thing. Okay, and finally, the water. Now, we are left here with the fatty acid and glycerol. So, the fatty acids and glycerol, due to their fatty uh, nature, they are uh, hydrophobic. They don't like to be mixed with water a lot. That's why... They prefer to be absorbed not into the blood capillary as a start. They are absorbed into the lymph vessels or the lacti. The, the fatty acid and glycerol are absorbed into the lymph vessel and not into the blood vessel. Now, later on in the body uh, and exactly uh, at the arteries of the neck where they are large enough, the fatty acids and glycerol will join the other nutrients in the blood. They are not uh, anymore in the lymph vessel. Okay, so this is how nutrients are absorbed into the uh, villi of the small intestine. So as a summary here, we can say that during intestinal absorption, this phenomenon that we are talking about, there are two routes or ways for nutrients. The first route is the blood, where glucose, amino acids, water, minerals, and vitamins are absorbed. And the second is the lymph, where fatty acids and glycerol are absorbed. And now a very important point that we have to point to is the characteristics that favor or help the intestinal absorption. We noticed in the video as we were talking that there are some characteristics that help or favor or make intestinal absorption easier and more efficient. First of all, the first characteristic is a large surface area due to the presence of millions of villi. We know that the small intestine is found in a small area in the body and the abdomen, but due to first to the folds and the ridges and the millions of villi, the surface area of absorption can reach 200 meters square, so it's a very large surface area of absorption. The second characteristic is the presence of thin wall. We have a thin wall of the villus and, of course, a thin wall of the blood capillary and the lymph vessel, so the nutrients can pass through the wall as we saw earlier. And finally, millions of blood capillaries and lymph vessels, because since we have millions of villi, each villus has a blood capillary and a lymph vessel. Then we have millions of blood capillaries and lymph vessels that make the absorption more efficient and uh, mo most, our, uh, if not all, the nutrients will be absorbed into the blood stream. I hope you understood everything. Thanks for your attention and see you later with a new video.